Hello and welcome to this Excel 2013 training video. We're looking at VBA at the moment and in this tutorial we're going to have an overview of loops. We're going to look at the for loop and a do while loop. So if you'd like to start up Excel, we'll have a look. Okay, so looping is one of the most powerful programming techniques. Uh, loop in Excel means you can loop for a range of cells, you can run through lots of code really quickly and easily really is useful in all languages, uh, especially Excel. What we're going to do is the same trick as we've done in all the other videos. We're just going to go straight to the Developer tab and we're going to insert a Command button. Just going to drag that on the screen. Then we're going to right click and View Code. Okay, so we're inside our Command button click and what we're going to do first of all is declare a variable. So we'll declare variable dim i as an integer. I'm going to come down a couple of lines just to make it clear on the screen. And we're going to start with a for loop. And to start that, it's just simply typing in the word for, followed by a space. Uh, because we set our variable as i, we'll use that. So for i equals 1 to 6. So for i equals 1 to 6. And that means it's going to loop round 6 times, or 60, as I typed it there. Let's go back to 6. There we go. To end a for loop, you just type in the word next i or to continue the for loop, depending on how it's going. So it's going to keep checking through if there's another option. So in between the for and the next, we'll put our code. So what we're going to do is just very simple, fill in some cells with a value. So we're just going to type in cells, as we want to access the cell property. Open brackets, and now it's asking for a row index. So for our row index, let's put i. So our row index we know now is going to be between 1 and one and 6. So the first loop through will be 1, row 1, then it will be row 2, then it will be row 3, and so on. So let's uh, put a comma, and we want a column index. So we'll just use column 1. So we're using column indexes, so A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3, and so on. So we'll close our brackets. So we're saying cells I, comma 1, dot value and that will equal let's say 10. So I'm just going to tidy that up a little bit so you can see it a bit more clearly. So we've got our uh, dim i as integer. So for i equals 1 to 6, do the following code. Next i means come back round and do it again if there are numbers left. So let's come out of design mode or code mode and take off design mode and give your button a quick click. And hopefully what you'll get is tens down to six. And that works perfectly. So it did that for us. We didn't have to worry about adding or changing any code there, which is quite useful. Okay, so that was a single loop. Let's have a look at doing a double loop. Let's go back into our Visual Basic. And as you can see, there's a single loop here happening. We could increase that and have a secondary loop. And what I'm going to do, just to make it easier, is just delete. You could amend this code and change it, but I'm just going to delete it and type it in again just to make it clear from what we're doing. So we're going to declare our variables first. So let's dim i as integer again. And we'll also do a comma j as, let's use a lowercase j, sorry, j as it doesn't matter if it was an uppercase or lowercase, it's just me being fussy. So we've got our two variables this time. So we'll start off our for loop as we did before. So for i equals 1 to 6. And then we'll just end that so we can see that one ending. So next i. Okay, so in between last time we just put our code for the cells. This time, let's tab across and we'll start a new for loop. And this time we'll say for uh, j equals 1 to, let's say 4. 
And again, we'll come down. I'll just show you how that's ending. So next J. So inside our original for loop, we've now got a secondary for loop. And inside here, we can put our code. So we'll do what we did before, and we'll just fill in some cells with data. So we'll choose cells, and we'll open our brackets, and we'll use I for the rows, so the 1 to 6 for rows. And this time, for the column index, we'll use J, and we'll close our brackets. So this time, J, or columns, is 1 to 4. And we just need to put in a value, so dot value equals, let's do 10 again. And that's it, so we've got ourselves a double loop there. So let's have a run of that and see what happens. I'm just going to clear out the contents of the cell so it looks clearer. Okay, give it a click, and there you go. We've now got four columns filled in and six rows. Obviously the number 10 in all of them is not very useful to anything, but we can look at expanding that into more useful features later on. Okay, let's have a look at a, another type of loop now, a do-while loop. A do-while loop is another great example of how loops work. And this time, the code that's placed between the do-while and the word loop runs. And it will run as long as the argument after the do-while is true. So let's just clear out the code we've got there, first of all. And then we'll go back to our Visual Basic Let's just clear out the code, we'll keep the private sub and end sub. And what we'll do is we'll just declare variable i again as integer. And this time we'll assign i a value, so i equals 1. So we're declaring the variable i here and we're just setting it a value here. So the do while, nice and easy. If you can remember the words do while, you know how to start this function. So do while i is less than, let's say 10. So while i is less than 10, which at the moment, that's true. So do while true. So that's good. As long as this number is higher than 10, it's going to do this code. So let's come down a line and let's set what we want it to do. So let's say cells, open brackets, i comma one, close brackets, dot value equals, let's go for 20 this time. Got bored of looking at the tens. Press enter. And what we need to do is increment our variable i. If we don't, it's always going to be lower than 10, and it's just going to continue to write that all the way down. So what we need to do, or well, no, it's going to continue to write that in cell 1 even. Okay, so what we need to do is i equals i plus 1. So what we're doing there is just taking the current value of i and adding 1 and storing it back in this variable up here. And what we need to do to finish this one off is just type in the word loop. So as long as this is true, loop back round and do it again. So let's have a look. Let's run that and see what happens. Let's click on our command button. And yeah, there we go. So that's a basic introduction to a couple of different loops. We'll explore these later on when we get into some deeper programs. So we'll certainly be using them. And we'll have a look at a few other loops that are available. But for now, we'll end this video, and I hope it's been useful. Thank you for watching.